Hi. Uh, what the most popular or most watched, I should say, video on my you on my YouTube channel, Change My Relationship, is adult narcissistic children. And on that video, I have hundreds of comments from people who have the sad, painful stories of their adult narcissistic children cutting them out of their lives or making it so difficult to have anything to do with them. And a lot of them have lost the relationship with their grandchildren as a result and are just heartbroken. So I wanted to do a video that talks about seven traits of narcissistic adult children. Now, I've also been asked to do one on teens. This can also be uh, older teens too that are really narcissistic. So narcissism is increasing in our society. It is sad, but it is. And it has a lot to do with social media, where it's the me generation, where it's you know always putting up the selfies and making everything look perfect. And it's also, we're a highly materialistic society. We've, in this generation, my generation, given our kids way too much. So they're kind of spoiled. They're used to having everything. They're used to getting all of this stuff that they have given to them. And we were just super materialistic compared to the way I was raised and you were probably raised. I mean, we had nothing. We rarely ever went out to dinner and we didn't get a whole lot of material things. We were happy with basic things. I mean, I remember being excited when color TV came out. Uh, so narcissism is increasing. Uh, there's a lot of parents who are struggling with narcissistic adult children, narcissistic teen children. And as a result, they have very hard problems to deal with. How? Because some of those dealing with them and kind of having boundaries could mean the loss of their children and the loss of their grandchildren, as those people have written in their stories on the adult narcissistic children video. So seven traits. First is grandiosity. Grandiosity means big, enlarged view. So they have a grandiose or high, too high view of themselves. They think of themselves as way better than they really are. This came from, partially, our school systems, which have had for the last like 20 or so years, the everybody does great kind of mentality. Everybody gets a trophy. Everybody is successful. You've done a good job, even if you really haven't done a good job. Too much praise for not enough behavior that warrants praise. So this grandiose view is I'm better than I really am. And employers are saying that that's the view that they have, that they come in and they're, I expect everything to be given to me. I expect a high, good position. I don't have to work up in the company. I shouldn't have to start at the bottom. I should have great pay. I should get a great position, even though I don't know anything. That's grandiosity. The next one is aggression and rage. Narcissists have a lot of rage and they're very aggressive unless they're a covert narcissist or a passive aggressive narcissist. And then it's kind of hidden and couched, but the rage is there. Uh, they express this rage and when they're corrected, when somebody points out their wrongs and they are going to literally just pounce back and attack, attack you with just venom and I'm going to attack you so strong that you aren't going to know what has hit you. What you're doing is you're challenging their reality. In their mind, they're okay. They don't have a problem. And when you come, when you say anything, even if it's a gentle, nice criticism, or if it's just saying how you feel, they are going to pounce on you. And it's to let you know that they're protecting that facade and they are not going anywhere near looking at a criticism of themselves. This is sometimes makes you kind of walk on eggshells and feel like you can't say anything and you can't deal with anything and you can't hold them accountable and you can't confront them. And uh, because if you do, this is what you get. And that's where the cutoff comes and the punishment to you for daring to say something where 
some people have their grandchildren use as pawns, where it's when you're nice, you get them. When you're not, they're cut off for a while just to let you know this is what could happen if you dare bring that up again or if you dare act in that certain way. So, and, a lot, and many people have just had the grandkids cut off. The next one is materialism. And this materialism, we've kind of done this in many ways uh, in the Western culture. We've given our kids so much, new cell phones, new cars, clothes all the time, new clothes, uh, just that, you know, I want it, I get it kind of culture, credit cards. The average student, I believe when they get out of college has somewhere between 10 and $20,000 in credit card debt. So this materialism is not healthy. This materialism results in shallow values. It results in wanting too much. It results in living high, living above their means, and then expecting somebody to either pay it for them or you to pay it for them or you to supplement their lifestyle or for you to, for, to continue helping them or to bail them out when there's a problem. The next one is self-admiration, and that is literally what narcissism means, which is to admire or fall in love with yourself. That's the, the legend or myth that came around with Narcissus, right, when he saw his reflection in the pool and be, uh, fell in love with himself. So self-admiration, I think I'm great, I'm wonderful. This is the selfies and the putting up of all the things and thinking that you know, so highly of themselves, but it results in the lack of empathy toward other people and other people's feelings, which is part of the problem. As a parent, the ch narcissistic children do not stop to think how you feel when you're affected by their actions or how you feel when they don't treat you respectfully as a parent or give you a place in their life. Then there's this unnatural affection. This unnatural affection is, and I've watched it and studied it for a long time, because I think back, I mean, I was raised in a home with a alcoholic, rageful, physically, emotionally abusive father, not towards us kids. He was emotionally and verbally abusive, but not physically, but physically abusive toward my mom, super abusive, raging alcoholic drank till I was 17. What started before I was born, drank till I was 17. I still, I mean, he quit drinking when I was 17. He made amends. So I really respect him for that and, and the change. But I would never have treated my dad with the same type of dismissal that a lot of these younger kids are treating their parents with. I mean, there is just a, in our culture, we were raised with respect for authority, respect for adults. This is lacking in this younger generation. They've been taught with, you can, you can call CPS if you think your parent's out of line and your parent doesn't have a right to do this. And the public schools now are starting to, or have actually, and getting worse, not disciplining students for the things that they're doing because they're making excuses or maybe it's not the right uh, quota of that certain ethnicity that they're able to discipline. I mean, it's just craziness. Teachers don't have control in the classrooms from what I've heard. Uh, this is, again, partially our fault where we have not taught them to have respect for their elders and respect for authority, and they don't. So they don't have the same natural affection or the same natural respect and honor that we were raised with for our parents because I would not even consider treating my parents that way, no matter what my parents do. I could have boundaries, but I still have a certain respect and obligation that I feel toward my parents. Shallow values. There used to be our values have shifted completely in our culture. Uh, used to be freedom, hard work, sacrifice, family, and morality, right? You want to give back to society. You want to be a good person. You want to be responsible. You want to raise a family. You want to be moral. Now, literally, the values have shifted. Fame, wealth, self-fulfillment, okay? Fame, wealth, self-fulfillment. That those are the values that these kids have as their number one values. So you can see how that shift would affect behavior and that how that would affect relationships and how it's not healthy. Next one is entitlement. And that's where they expect things for nothing, right? Entitlement means I'm owed it. And so they have an attitude toward us as their parents 
that we owe them. We owe them a good lifestyle. We owe them a comfortable lifestyle. We owe them help. We should take care of the kids or help them when they ask us for help, but not expect anything in return or expect any help in return. We shouldn't expect for them to give us any uh, consideration. If they need us, we should be there. If they don't need us, we should stay out of their way, right? Because they're, that's entitlement. The entitlement is I deserve it and I don't have to do anything to get it. And they're demanding. And if they don't get it, they can cut us off. You're not gonna help me with that? Fine, don't need you, out of here, okay? And that's the kind of behavior that we're dealing with. So seven traits of adult narcissistic children, let me read them again. It's grandiosity, aggression and rage, materialism, self-admiration, unnatural affection, shallow values, and entitlement. So if you're dealing with that, what do you do? It's difficult. So what you're dealing with is a difficult person in your life. And there are lots of different things you can do. All my videos address difficult relationships. You can apply all my principles and all my videos to your situation with this child because any difficult relationship with an a difficult person, there are general principles that you can use with all, regardless if it's an addiction, narcissism, you know, any, any of those things. Uh, I've written a book. I haven't shown you my books before, except this is a second video that I decided to do that with. Uh, when Love Hurts, 10 Principles to Transform Difficult Relationships gives you 10 what I call life-changing or relationship-changing relationship transforming principles that if you apply, they're all scriptural. So they give you, if you're um, Christian, you have faith and you want to integrate faith with it, you'll be able to do that with this. If not, there's still lots of really good principles in here. And uh, I have studies on, the, on that book too, because I teach that book as a class called Transforming Difficult Relationships have huge, huge help with people that are dealing with narcissistic uh, parents, narcissistic children, narcissistic spouses. And uh, that's just one difficult relationship, but it's really helpful for that. So I would say if you are struggling with that, consider that book if books help you. Uh, there is a scripture, interestingly, that talks about this, where it describes 2 Timothy 3, 2 through 5, People will, people will be lovers of themselves, lovers of money, boastful, proud, abusive, disobedient to their parents, ungrateful, unholy, without love, unforgiving, slanderous, without self-control, brutal, not lovers of the good, treacherous, rash, conceited, lovers of pleasure rather than lovers of God, having a form of godliness but denying its power, have nothing to do with them. That's what the scripture says. And it talks about, I believe, um, really the context of this verse is in the last days. And uh, we have seen, I'm not saying that that's what it is, I'm not getting into that, but I'm saying that there is a change in attitude in our young people today, in uh, their outlook on life. And I think a lot of it is how we've raised them but uh, it is still a painful, difficult situation to deal with. So thank you for watching this video on Change My Relationship. Uh, please, if you have any questions, write me. You can write me through my website and you can write me through the YouTube video. I try to watch everything and answer it. If I don't respond, please go to my, uh, my website and write me an email and I will get back to you. So. Thank you for watching this video on Change My Relationship.